It is the top of the hour. I'm Nicole Burley. You're watching News Nation Rush Hour. It has been months since busloads and planes of migrants heading north made headlines all across the country. Busload after busload from border states arriving in cities like Chicago, Philly, New York City. Many of those migrants on board making the choice to get on board. The tactics and even the move itself sparking outrage, though, among some. Others even deeming a busload sent to Martha's Vineyard as inhumane. Our system is, was inundated uh, with, uh, you know, those who were seeking shelter because of the callousness of those uh, other states that pushed them out. They're not car cargo. They are not chattel. They're human beings. Well, people behind the moves like Governor Greg Abbott saying border communities like El Paso are inundated and overwhelmed and these sanctuary cities have the means to help. So News Nation went back to see for ourselves if those migrants were getting the resources they needed. In a moment, we'll speak with Fernando Garcia to look into immigration services nationwide. But first, here's correspondent Dre Clark live in New York City. Nicole, for the most part, those migrants who have made it beyond Texas and here to New York City are very happy. They have a warm place to sleep, access to meals and other services. But for those migrants now sitting at the border in Texas, it's become a challenging ordeal because many of the associations and organizations on the ground that are meant to help them have run out of money and resources. In fact, many migrants are now sleeping on the street and praying that a bus will come for them and bring them here to New York City where they can find relief. Winter in El Paso, Texas. The morning temperature of frigid 34 degrees. On the streets, thousands of migrants hardly dressed to battle the winter cold. Men, women, and children sleeping on the cold concrete or cardboard covered with thin blankets. An average of 2,500 migrants now cross the southern border every day into El Paso. Officials on the ground say they're overwhelmed. Shelters are full and resources are exhausted. At this point, the, the services up here and in other states are better than they are down there. Rachel Self, an immigration attorney living on Martha's Vineyard, was one of the many islanders who volunteered to help 49 migrants who were flown to the island without advance notice. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis arranged the flight. So for the 49 people that arrived on Martha's Vineyard, they are, five of them are, are living on the vineyard and several of them are living around Massachusetts and a couple of them have moved on to the places they originally were trying to get to before they were lied to. So they are doing as well as they can be doing, but the road ahead for them is not easy because the system is not easy. The migrants encounter welcoming volunteers who quickly arrange resources for their unexpected stay. The same has been done for migrants in New York City, where 4,100 have arrived since May on buses from Texas. New York City Mayor Eric Adams refuses to turn anyone away. We're talking about additional resources for people who are in need. But he has declared a state of emergency, claiming the city is having difficulty handling the influx of asylum seekers. And he's asking the federal government for more money and resources. Hola, Meanwhile, local organizations have stepped up to help offering migrant services like health care, dental services, and free legal advice. Every morning, Indileda Silva and her two children walk from their Bronx shelter that they call home for now to a nearby school bus stop. The New York City school system enrolled more than 5,500 new migrants at the start of the new school year. Silva is happy her children like their new school, but she worries about her own future. Work. We need to be able to look for work. We would like to find an apartment with a kitchen. It's been three to four months living this way. So what I'm hopeful of is that people can use the example of how we handled the influx of people on Martha's Vineyard and make it a national example so that everybody can absorb the responsibility and welcome these people. These newcomers now living all around the nation dreamed of one day making it to America for a better life. They're here, but their futures are uncertain. But thousands of miles away, many migrants wonder if they too will ever one day find a place 
where they can get help. Because right now, at least in El Paso, Texas, they're cold, hungry, and homeless. And unfortunately, the situation in El Paso, Texas could become worse once Title 42 expires uh, next week. The Trump administration implemented the law during the pandemic, allowing U.S. officials to turn migrants away from the border as a matter of public health. The concern is now that once that law expires, that migrants will run wildly across the border, creating a humanitarian crisis. Nicole? Yeah, there are certainly concerns. Okay, Dre, thank you for that. Joining us now is...